to RBT. Now consider their impact on mass transit buses trying to make the crossing with a schedule to keep. Not only Route 961, the max service between Norfolk and the peninsula, but Route 61, its predecessor, have faced regular service meltdowns due to HRBT congestion. On the second week of max service, I was at the Newport News Transportation Center talking with then, the then superintendent of peninsula operations for HRT. Sure enough, the 961 was about 30 minutes down due to trouble with HRBT. I told her we're going to be fudging the crossing until we get light rail across the water. Of course, that's probably a bare minimum of 15 years away. Therefore, a fast ferry is an excellent measure in the interim. While it may mean slightly slower commuter commute times on paper, passengers will have dependable schedules and, yes, the crossing on a fast boat should be fun. Let me close by putting a very human face on this issue. Each day, a number of South Hampton Roads residents take the bus to work for jobs on the peninsula. With numerous bus routes shutting down for the evening at 6 or 7 p.m., tunnel delays can mean workers missing their connecting bus home. <coughs> Implementing a fast ferry system ensures that, that they make it home to their families at the dinner table. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Next will be Ellis James. We welcome you today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the organization. My name is Ellis W. James. I'm a lifelong resident of Norfolk. And I have addressed you several times in the past. I'd like to focus on something that's very troubling this morning. I listened carefully to the new governor's speech. And he suggested that we would draw a good deal of our transportation funds from offshore drilling. Unfortunately, he, for the second time publicly, referenced the so-called study that was presented several years ago with respect to the revenues and the jobs that would be brought through offshore drilling. I had the opportunity to call the person responsible for that report. He admitted that he had been contacted by a senator from Virginia Beach he had 48 hours to do the report, and most of the report is oriented to the Gulf of Mexico, not to Virginia and not to the East Coast. I was quite surprised by that, but I was very pleased with his forthrightness and his honesty about it. If we are going to depend upon royalties from offshore drilling for transportation, we might as well adjourn this meeting this morning. We don't need to do any work along the line of transportation. It's going to take six to seven years to even get, if there are supplies off the coast, to that oil. And what are we going to do in the meantime? We have a serious problem on our hands, both in Northern Virginia as well as Hampton Roads. And I would submit that we need to communicate to the governor that that is not the best option for finding funding for our transportation needs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it very much. Next speaker, Chris Milandowski. We welcome you today. Mr. Chairman, Madam Chairman, uh, distinguished board, it's a pleasure to be here again. You probably used to see me by now, making a few public comments here. Uh, my name is Chris Malandoski. I'm a commercial real estate broker out of Norfolk. But we have a true regional uh, perspective from our company, and we want to see, we're really excited to see uh, that this is our true new push for re regionalism, and you guys are it. And thank you very much for your efforts so far. I just want you to imagine, dream with me for a second. If you lived in the Virginia Beach oceanfront, but you had to be at work 
in uh, uh, conference in D.C. in a matter of hours. But you had a lot of work to do. You could do it. Take the light rail, ride it to the high-speed rail terminal, no problem. If you uh, lived in uh, Ocean View, but you worked in Nassau Langley, but you wanted the bike to work, you could do it with a new uh, multimodal bridge replacing the Hampton Bridge, bridge tunnel. <coughs> if you lived, say you worked at the uh, Jefferson Particle Accelerator in uh, Newport News, but you had to be in Raleigh-Durham, the Research Triangle, in a matter of hours, and you had a lot of work to do. You could do it. You could ride the light rail across the, the new bridge structure, or perhaps maybe on one of the existing Hampton Roads bridge tunnels uh, structures, to, to uh, the light rail terminal, to the new uh, uh, route going southwest to Raleigh, the new high-speed rail spur. It's all possible. It's all doable. It will take time. But as our dreams have been ramping up here in the past few months, I would submit that everything that we can put on the table is doable. There are uh, private companies, as has been seen recently with the Midtown Tunnel, that can assist the public in getting it done. And so let's don't throw anything out, any idea out. We deserve more interstates. We deserve high-speed rail. We deserve new bridges. And uh, I will say one final thing. Uh, we may be just 1.7 million people, but it has been pointed out already, and I think very well, that 1.7 million people, but with all our defense capabilities, our geostrategic and geopolitical worth and weight is much greater than that 1.7 million. So uh, keep that in mind. When we are uh, uh, lobbying for funds from the federal, you know, we federal authorities, it could be argued that not only, not only are we uh, behind, but we're also uh, way proportionally below what we should be getting. So that's about it. I wanted to say one final thing. Uh, today at 530 at the Granby Theater, we're having a pep rally regarded, regarding uh, high-speed rail. It's going to be a, it's an educational meeting designed to inform the public and get them pumped up for the, the following uh, 27th and 28th meetings uh, when the feds are in town. So I would encourage you all to be there. And thanks again for your service to the community. And uh, let's keep it going. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next would be the consent agenda. Um, reference items number one and two on consent. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Next, we will go to the revised 2010 through 2015 six-year improvement program. Dwight, you want to make a few comments on yeah, those? Just a few comments. Uh, we don't want to beat this dead horse unnecessarily, but I thought it was appropriate that you all see some of the new information we've seen on the on the approved uh, uh, December 17th uh, six-year program. Next slide, Jim. Um, what do you see here? Uh, really, we just need to focus on the yellow uh, a horizontal line. You may recall that the the figure here in the pre-December 17th meeting was one percent increase. I would also like to point out if you go down two horizontal lines to Northern Virginia, you see a plus 9.9 percent. .9%. The rest of the state views this six-year total as indicating that only Hampton Roads and Northern Virginia got an increase in, this, in the uh, total allocations for all funding systems for the entire six years. I've heard from some of my colleagues across the state and they have noticed we are, with Northern Virginia, the only ones with a plus sign. Next slide, please. You'll see to the right-hand side on this yellow horizontal line the only negative uh, on this chart. It's for all funding sources. It's just for FY10. The number on December 16th before the CTB approved the final six-year program was a cut of 13%. Based on the information on VDOT's website, FY10 were now cut uh, almost 20%. And again, 
We're the only district cut in the state. Next slide, please. Uh, this shows you the allocation for all funding sources uh, by fiscal year for all districts. And you'll see in the first three years, um, we were at 8.7%, 7.7%, and 12.5%. Only in years, roughly uh, FY14 and 15, did we come close to what I would have liked to have seen, which was something between 18 and 21%. So in the first three years of this six-year program, uh, we are, are, what I would say, relatively low on the equity side. And the last slide, uh, you will see on the interstate system uh, allocations only that you'll recall in FY10 for Hampton Roads, we had been at $17 million out of almost $300 million. We had expressed some concern. Northern Virginia has been consistently in the first three years at, at close to $250 million. We were at $17 million. Well, on the 17th, they, uh, they approved the six-year program. It, it appears with a $5 million cut, further cut in FY10, but a $2.5 million increase in FY11 because FY11 was a zero. So we lost $5 million in FY10. We're down to $12.5 million, about 4.2% of the state allocation. We went from zero to $2.5 million, so we're right at 1%. Uh, we jumped back to $16 million in FY12, and then we start to climb from there. The reason why on the first slide we were at an increase of 1.4% was because in FY15, we had been at $95 million uh, prior to the action on the 17th of December. And on the 17th, they changed our allocation FY 2015 to over $100 million, which essentially put us in the plus for the entire six years. So Mr. Chairman, that's my summary of what uh, you know, what we see was approved in final. We gained uh, a little bit overall. We lost a little bit at the beginning from where we were when I was expressing concerns. Uh, as noted in here, I was there. Uh, Vice Chairman uh, my, Mayor Ward was there. Uh, uh, Bruce Goodson was there. And uh, we had Ray Taylor there. And he and all four of us spoke. Uh, and then the, the board took action after that. My recommendation today is more than just what you see in the, in the uh, agenda packet. Uh, the agenda packet says transmit board concerns to the uh, Secretary of Transportation. I'd recommend that we also have a discussion uh, with board level people uh, with the Secretary. I'm sure we're going to try to get her to come before you folks sometime in the near future and discuss the update process that's used. Uh, we were concerned that we were pretty much left in the dark until monies had been divvied out. So we think getting at the allocations earlier is better. Again, we'd like to talk about the, the allocation of the discretionary interstate funds. Uh, I'd recommend we discuss this further at the retreat when we have a little more time. And then the last thing would be, again, to recommend that the board be uh, also fully engaged in this discussion with the secretary. I want to thank you very much for this positive report. <laughs> Jeff. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think arguing about allocations is appropriate and necessary. And the dichotomy between what Northern Virginia gets and what we get is, is I think, significant and should be discussed. I know their policy has been to fund things that are somewhere along the way construction so they can be completed with limited resources. But it seems to me if we focus on that, the real issue is inadequate funding. And until we start addressing the issue of funding uh, so that there's enough money to do projects everywhere, figuring out who's the winner and who's the loser in a battle that's all lost because not enough money to do anything. I mean, you know, we claim victory because we got $12 million dollars you know, $12 million is enough to build a decent intersection somewhere. So my point is, while we're communicating, it's fine to talk about the disparities, it's fine to talk about the interstate and, and the lack of funding for that. There's not going to be any money for urban <coughs> projects, urban funding um, over these six years for any of the uh, communities here that, that depend on those urban funds. And um, so I think what we really need to be talking about is 
the need for additional funding for transportation and make sure that's a constant point in the communications we deliver. Because if we don't increase the revenue stream, you know, we can't do projects and fighting over the nickels and dimes, you know, really doesn't get you too far. But Mr. Chairman, Thank to you. follow up on, on Mayor Frank, I, I am concerned though if we bring that into the discussion, we're going to, that's going to be, this discussion will be lost. And because I think we have a legitimate uh, point here that Hampton Roads is being underfunded. And if we, if we try to make our point with that and also talk about additional funding for statewide funding, that, you know, that's gonna, this, this important issue is going to be lost in that discussion. Well, so so I, I just caution that we need to keep those two issues separate and focus on, clearly focus on this one, because if, if funding does appear, we don't want to be behind the eight ball with, with, the, with the allocated funding. I have no confidence that come, come year 2015, someone is going to say, hey, Hampton Roads is getting more than Northern Virginia. That's not right. And then it's going to be all reallocated. No one's going to remember back in 2009. Those people are gone. That gov you know, the governor will be gone by then. Well, and, and I guess my position is I agree with both of you in what I'm trying to say. I, uh, Dwight was very kind to get this information to me sooner. And um, that was, you know, we agreed that once the new administration came in, it's no need to talk to someone, so I'm going to be there a few days when this information came. And it's going to be my recommendation that Molly and I, along with Dwight, the new Secretary of Transportation has already reached out. We need to meet with him and our uh, Commonwealth <coughs> Transportation Board representatives as well, all in one meeting, to understand what is here. And I, that's what I want clarification on. And if we are uh, not being treated fairly, we need to address it. But what Joe also is saying is absolutely critical. Uh, and I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but if you allow me, in the last month, I've been to the Pentagon and with Admiral Harvey in front of the governor-elect at the time uh, addressing military issues. And at the Pentagon, transportation has been raised, and with Admiral Harvey in front of the governor, transportation has been raised. The Navy is a big part of the economy of the city of Virginia Beach, this region, and the Commonwealth. I got a letter from Jerry Bridges last week. He says, says he needs a third crossing. Well, the port as I understand it, is the second largest contributor to the Commonwealth in revenue just under Dulles. Well, folks, that is significant. And we're going to have to make these, um, we're going to have to roll up our sleeves and, and something's going to have to give. We cannot, in my opinion, risk the Navy, military being in jeopardy in this region or the Commonwealth nor can we let the port suffer and it have an impact on the overall economic condition of the Commonwealth as well as this region. But enough said, but I, I hope you're seeing, I do hear what you're saying and I think I understand it. And we got to deal with it. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. And I, I, I apologize if I knew you were going to say that. I would have spoke before you so you could conclude with that uh, opportunity and speech. And we always focus on the money and I think that is part of the solution. I have learned a great deal and I've had the opportunity, and many of us had sat down with uh, Mr. Chiquette, and I've had the opportunity to sit down with the USA insurer, FHWA, uh, Federal Highways, uh, it was John Mazur, uh, we've had the congressman, we've had different agencies sit around us. And one thing we all came to and understood, time. Time is extremely important when you want to build something. Any one of our projects, and I can only talk about the many because it's one of the most clearest things in my mind. Every day that goes by, it's thirty thousand dollars. Put it another way, it's a feature a day. There are opportunities and flexibility we should start looking at in terms of time. We all saw it when it came to uh, the bridge in terms of the Gilmington Bridge. It started off, and I apologize if the number is wrong, about eighty-three million, eighty-five million. Within several years, it was one hundred and eighty-six million, eighty-three million. All the money will not build it if you don't start looking at the fact that time is really the important commodity. And that's how you'll be able to build things. So when we have the opportunity, when yourself and others sit down with uh, our new Secretary of Commerce Transportation and talk with him, because I know he's coming down here these, in the next several weeks to talk to each one of us, 
time is extremely important looking at the process. And I want to thank the Coast Guard, for instance, and all the other various agencies that we had to go through when it came to VDOT, for instance, FHWA. When we came with the South Norfolk Jordan Bridge, in less than a year to build something, the amount of effort that was taken to be on the telephone on a daily basis was insurmountable because time is what's going to cost you. You won't get anything built until you start looking at the process and all these agencies have to start sitting at the table and start talking to each other. When I heard from the mayor, and you talked about the uh, high-speed rail, you said well, ha when you talked to the, uh, it was the Department of, uh, uh, what was it, Department of Rail Transit, <laughs> Public Transit, and what did you say? Well, how long is it going to take? When, is, when, when can we expect it? Time costs a great deal of money. It's $11 million or more a year on Dominion, I believe. I look to see, you go by a year. Every time that your project, in, and I say yours, in one of the highest priority projects in Midtown Town, if you want to lower your toll, stop building it. It's time. That is what's eating up the profits, as they say, or the bottom line. So you are absolutely correct, it's going to take both. But we're going to have to do something about improving the process, and we have to start now, we have to start talking to each other, because they don't talk to each other. Even within the agencies, they don't talk to each other. We are looking at flexibility in terms of trying to build roads and phases. That's a difficult thing to look at, because the fear is that if you don't build it within a certain period of time, say 20 years, you have to pay back all the federal money. We have an opportunity to maybe all of us do to buy right of ways right now if it can be done. But the fear is that if you give the money for right away, what happens is then you're obligated to do the federal funding. Or you're obligated to do state funding. Where are we going to get the funding? But right now is when you can actually purchase right away at a very affordable price and actually free up those people that are living in places where they're stuck. So please, you are absolutely correct, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Frank, you're absolutely correct. Mr. Goodson, you're absolutely correct when it comes to money, because it takes a certain amount to build these roads. But it's time we need to start looking at, and the process, so we've got to start sitting around with all these agencies collectively and actually say to them, what are you doing? Because I'm going to tell you, I once said this, 30 days we would have lost the Jordan Bridge because of the time, the window related to the General Assembly. So think about it. If you want more money, think about improving the process. Great comments. We no, should. It, and again, it's not to take anything away from you because I wish, uh, if I knew you were going to say something, because I prefer you to end with it. <laughs> but I thank you. Well, thank, thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, great comments. We'll go to item number. I, I know you hate getting, you want to fly, but let me do this. Um, this is a lot of process conversation, and, and I'd like to I'd like to see what our agenda is going to be in February. But I think this ought to be a big part of it. This amendment revision to the six-year plan, I feel like we reacted to it. We we were not ahead of it. And it's not a criticism. It's just it's just what happened. And a lot of how we have um, uh, succeeded, perhaps in the past, has been built on relationships that people have had with individuals in Richmond, as opposed to process that the organization has. And and his, and his seats change. You know, Mayor Frank steps down in in, in June or July. Uh, all that institutional knowledge, all that relationship, goes with him. And I think part of what we've got to say is, how do we replace that? But how do we replace it with some process that says we learned some lessons from what happened here? And so how are we making sure that we're communicating with the, the VDOT CFO, we're communicating effectively with Dennis, we're communicating with the secretary, you know, all throughout the organization. I watched the Economic Development Alliance go to constantly go up to Richmond and, and meet and interact with the BEDP folks, trying to build relationships and trying to, in their case, get leads. In our case, we're trying to get money. And I think we've got to be up there building our case constantly. And it's got to be more than the people around the table building on their personal relationships. It's got to be a process that we put in place. I think that's, that's a retreat agenda I agree with topic. You. I agree with you. Mr. Chairman, right now I've got, and I think I've just about got the retreat agenda full not in this particular order, military and transportation, prioritization, six-year improvement program, and high-speed rail. I think that's going to take the entire, with lunch, it'll take the entire two hours. But, and we're going to have a little bit about board training. I think that's a full agenda. If there's something else somebody wants, please let me know. But um, we're, going to, we're, going to have, we're going to have all of those hopefully covered with at least 30-minute discussion of each. All right, real good comments. We'll go to item number four, Dwight.
Uh, in your packet, attached to item number four, uh, is a uh, set of long-range plan visions and goals. Uh, it's one of those uh, boxes that the TPO uh, really should check off on. Uh, you can see in the background uh, uh, section here uh, the basis for putting those goals together. Uh, if you flip over for just a second to attachment four, you'll see uh, all of those goals listed there. There are about there are about ten or twelve of them, including uh, enhancing public involvement, uh, looking at regional perspectives, the fiscal constraint issue, the economic vitality, which is now part of the uh, 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 prioritization process, safety, security. Uh, improvements in uh, linking transportation and land use, which is still a, a legislative issue, the systems management, preserving the system, and so forth. So all of these things have been recommended by the Technical Transportation Advisory Committee. So, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a motion for approval of those recommendations? Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'd like to make a couple comments if I could. Please. Um, first of all, the one, two, three, four, five, Six line down talks about increased accessibility and mobility of people and freight. I think freight is a very narrow um, term. Uh, it, it includes obviously the containers, it includes the um, great bulk kind of items that the shippers do, but to me, uh, it doesn't include the transportation of food from a warehouse to a grocery store or furniture to, you know, a warehouse to, and maybe my definition of freight and, and the other, rest of the world is, is different. But it occurs to me that maybe the word ought to be goods or something like that. It's a little broader in context than simply freight. Does anyone object to that change? We'll make no. And I, and I do that same thing. Uh, on the next to the last uh, bullet where it starts, enhance the integration. And, and, and then the good. other comment, yeah. I, uh, two other comments. One is, last uh, bullet to get is preservation of the existing transportation system. And I assume that means maintenance and replacement, but I'm not sure that preservation is yeah. the best choice of words. I, I would substitute <coughs> maintenance and replacement or put that in parentheses. Does anyone object to that? Okay. Do I have a motion? Uh, excuse me. One more last thing. Right. <laughs> one, one of the things we don't have here is addressing revenue. And it seems to me there ought to be a bullet that talks about, um, you know, working toward finding revenue sources uh, to support the, the transportation system. Does anyone object to that? Dedicated revenue source. Okay. Yeah, dedicated and sustainable revenue would be better. You got that, Mr. Farmer? I got it. Dedicated and sustainable. Any other additions? Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. You've got, we've got some public comments in, in, in the packet, and one of them talks about the separation of safety and security here. And I think the, the road of, it makes good sense. Matt, I think there, there, it's almost a phrase that's gotten thrown out there, safety and security go together. But part of the challenge that we have in this region is we haven't really built the case that with these bridges and tunnels and, and the military, we're unique and different, and therefore we should be funded accordingly. And, and I would advocate, following this person, I think it's Admiral Taylor's comments, that, that those two ought to be separated. We, yeah, we want safe highways, but this security issue, I think, is different. I'd throw that out for the group, but it's, it's, it's in everybody's place. I don't have a suggestion on what the language is other than um, I don't understand the point of you the safe, safe, to me safety is um, this, the reports that we get about uh, there's an accident there's mobility how do we handle that do people wear their seat belts all that kind of stuff security I think is a different issue that's, that's oh. real for us that, that, that you're not saying the, taking it out I just mean separate I just think reports. they need to be they're distinct issues that shouldn't be lumped together um, national security national it's more national security homeland security more than it is highway safety but um, well, what's your recommendation? My right? recommendation would, would be to ask staff to come up with some language around security. I think the safety piece, um, you know, as it says, uh, uh, increase the safety of the, that's fine. But I think there ought to be some language. And again, it's this idea that, that we're unique and that, that, that these issues great, that we face point. are different than what Roanoke faces. Great point. Dwight, you got good clarification on that? Perfect. Okay, do I have a motion? Option as amended. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition? 
Thanks. We'll move on to item number five. Uh, Thank you. Item number five, uh, Mr. Chairman, is about our uh, CMAC RSTP project selection process. As you know, for about 15 years, we've had a national model of using a, for what most of you now know as a rating and ranking system. It's been through rigorous analysis from the TTAC, from the board uh, years ago. Uh, play, the process is in place. We're now doing multi-year funding uh, rather than come back every year. So what you have is attached the recommendations of the specific projects to receive uh, the uh, CMAC funding. The total amount for CMAC and RSTP funds in your background statement in the middle paragraph uh, was uh, 64.3 million for CMAC and 122.2 million for RSTP. We've got a 5% reserve as we normally do just in case we have cost overruns. So the technical committee and staff has recommended approval of the projects and the allocation shown in the attachment. Do you have a motion? Move adoption. Do I have a second? second? Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? <laughs> Item number six, the Cato Ridge Fast Ferry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Bob Hefley here from Metro Marine Holdings who's going to give you a presentation on a proposal and where they think uh, the region ought to be going on fast ferries. We welcome you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I know I've, I've, we've actually given a briefing like this to many of you this, in this room, so I'll go through rather uh, quickly, but not so fast that uh, others who haven't seen it can't pick up on it here. We're here today to uh, get recognition to do a couple of things. Uh, one item on the agenda will be a resolution that, that will um, uh, allow us to pursue the America's Marines Highway Program as a great facilitator uh, to jumpstart this uh, ferry concept. And the follow-on actions, of course, need to be, and this is just a very short uh, portion of a very long list of the type of things that need to be done. This is the basic concept that we're talking about. Five, more than five, uh, what we call small catamarans, uh, relatively speaking, uh, with 95 plus or minus passengers, 30 knots, which is about 35 miles an hour. The longest crossing, uh, which you'll see later in some of the routes, is would be Hampton to Norfolk, and that's 25 minutes. Uh, the other crossings will be uh, uh, shorter, 15, 20 minutes, depending. We intend to use green technology. These are very low emission diesel engines, uh, probably some solar power. And basically, these boats can be uh, built as, as hybrids. <clears throat> Operative word here is potential service points. Uh, this is just some ideas. Uh, I have to say, when we met with, uh, with Mayor Frank, it was kind of a game changer for us, because that's when we learned about the Peninsula Rapid uh, Transit Study. And we hadn't really thought much about Fort Eustis before. Uh, and uh, I know he has. So we've added that as a potential, and the uh, the victory landing there again. That's 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 an idea a concept that's uh, right now premature to say, but that's one of the things that we took from the preliminaries on that study. This is all very much consistent with uh, existing uh, plans and studies that have been done. The Trans Division Plan, of course, is, is Phase One. That was a draft, and Phase Two is in progress uh, as we speak. Um, we looked at the Hampton Roads to, I'm sorry, the HRT 20-year transportation plan, and we're very eager to see the results of the Peninsula Rapid Transit Study, which uh, hopefully have the most up-to-date uh, data that would uh, confirm ridership and so forth. Some of the benefits beyond the obvious, which is the uh, relief of the uh, bridge tunnel congestion, The tourism aspect does not apply across the board to, to all the markets. I know, again, Mayor Frank, you, you made it clear that your, your biggest concern is commuters, uh, as it is for us. Uh, Hampton, Norfolk, on the other hand, has much more tourist uh, traffic potential. Uh, our goal is to serve the markets uh, in a robust, comprehensive way, uh, whatever the needs are. And by the way, the uh, previous experience with the ferry similar to this uh, in this area is there is quite a bit of tourist market, particularly in the uh, in a tourist season. We have two types of tourist traffic. You're people from out of town, and I'm uh, constantly uh, surprised by the number of people I talk to 
uh, local people who used the ferry that had been here just as kind of local tourists to go across the water for different events and so forth. For the foreseeable future, uh, if rail, be it high speed, regular rail or, or light rail, uh, progresses, it's going to stop at the water's edge until that there's a, uh, a, a, some major work done to, to get rail actually across the water. High speed ferry system is the only real logical solution uh, to keep that rapid transit going, getting off a rail on one side of the water and rail on the other side of the water without being impeded by getting back on the road traffic. <coughs> Emergency response is not something we think much about here. Um, if you look at the last San Francisco air, uh, earthquake, of course, 9-11, and uh, the miracle on the Hudson, uh, you'll see that ferries played a big, big part in those operations. Uh, the San Francisco uh, Bay calls their uh, transit system WETA, Water Emergency Transit Authority. Uh, they're so much focused on using ferries as a uh, as a backup for their emergencies. And there's job creation, of course. Just some of the estimates. Startup is probably the wrong uh, word here because we actually um, start talking about starting with a, a pilot uh, route with three vessels. And this is actually talking about the cost of, of five vessels. So this is a very rough estimate of what the cost would be to put this whole thing in place over the years. Ridership targets are based on the data that's, that's already available, as is the fare box uh, recovery. Our strategy, um, I underline ferry specific because it wouldn't be very, very prudent to get up here and talk about yet another line item in a budget competing with uh, the very scarce uh, highway funds. Federal government spends money every year uh, on, on ferry operations and the Hampton Roads area, except for the, uh, of course, Elizabeth River Ferry in years gone by has gotten some of that money. But uh, we feel that there's a real opportunity to uh, compete here for federal funds uh, that are devoted to ferries. And through a prob uh, public-private partnership, uh, we're also confident that we can attract uh, private capital to participate in this. America's Marine Highway Program is, uh, is a fairly new program. I realize you can't really see this map very well, and it's, it's actually a draft. But MARAD, U.S. Maritime Administration, um, has set up this program to establish marine corridors and connectors and crossings and so forth um, that obviously parallel road operations. It is not a funded program per se. It's a facilitator technical assistance program but it is a gateway to federal funding. If you get in with the Marine Highways uh, program as it emerges here, um, that is going to really facilitate the uh, conversations with uh, the mayor here was talking about how difficult it is between time and coordination among agencies. And it, uh, it is very difficult. And uh, being part of the Marine Highways program is hopefully going to cut through a lot of that coordination among the various federal agencies. Ferry Boat Discretionary Program is uh, the primary uh, resource for uh, ferry-specific funding. And thanks to a bill uh, before the Senate and the House as we speak, virtually the same bill uh, sponsored by the uh, State of Washington delegation, and that's the largest ferry system in, in the world, as a matter of fact, in the State of Washington. Um, they expect to uh, triple the size of the Ferry Boat Discretionary Program to $200 million. So that represents a, an opportunity. And there are several others which I didn't want to enumerate here. Rough timeline if we get started. Again, I appreciate the discussion about time because um, if we can get started on this, uh, looking for the funds, everything is subject to getting the, the funding, uh, we can get something going by, by 2012. If in the spring and the fall we can go to work on seeing what funding is available. <coughs> Just a little bit of background. Uh, by the way, just an interesting point. You see that, that ship down in the, in the corner there, uh, part of the Hornblower logo. Uh, that is the former Hawaii Super Ferry. There are two of those ships. Um, 
that are almost identical. They are, as we speak, down at Lambert's Point. And they, uh, it was just announced yesterday that both of them will go, be going to Haiti. They're under Marad control now. They no longer belong to the Hawaii Super Ferry, uh, obviously. The next step is to adopt the, the, re the resolution I think is be before you here today. Uh, beyond that, we're looking forward to working with HRTPO and HRT, et cetera. And of course, the uh, HRTPO would need to endorse anything that goes forward uh, to, to Marad. This was our draft statement, but it's uh, superseded by, I believe, the, the resolution that you have, or Camelia, the So that ends my portion. Procedurally, I don't know. Are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, a couple of things. First of all, I support the idea of us advocating a endorsement as a marine highway corridor. I think that's a good first step, and we need to do that. Um, I have some issues about uh, how Mr. Hefley's group is going to participate. If you're talking about 38% uh, uh, revenue from tolls, uh, the rest of it's coming from someplace else, how does a private investment firm or your company uh, put money in in something that's uh, subsidized and um, where do you make money out of this thing? What kind of private investment are you talking about making and what's your capacity for doing it? I'm not looking for answers today because I don't want to take everybody's time, but the issues I have to con ask you to consider, and maybe you want to draft a letter to this group in response, is first, um, how do you see specifically your company's role in this? Um, what is the nature of the financial investment that your group is willing to make into the project? Uh, how do you see sustainable funding uh, to make up the uh, financial deficit that is caused both operationally and in terms of capital investment? Um, and I, I've seen a little bit here today about your prior experience, uh, but I'd like to know more about your experience in developing, operating, and marketing high-speed ferries. Um, in short, I'd just like more information about how you see this developing and what role your company is going to play in, in doing that. If you would just respond to him in writing as he's requested. Yes, sir. Happy to do that. Be, I believe there's another question. Cap. More of a comment. Uh, I'm not speaking for all DOD installations, but I know that you had indications of one of the stop points being Naval Station Norfolk. Uh, yeah. And I know we've had discussions. Uh, already with uh, with some of your team members on this, that there are certain you know, anti-terrorism force protection issues for any kind of access to a, a DOD reservation that you have to acknowledge, you have to anticipate and factor into your planning. And uh, I just give as an example the uh, the recent decision down in San Diego regarding their ferry to North Island as a uh, as an indicator of, of where that appetite is. One alternative is to go off the reservation, but very close. And that way, anybody can use the ferry, and then... It may be the path of least resistance, yeah. Thank you. Dennis? Mr. Chairman, Colonel, <clears throat> to follow on what Mayor Frank said, yeah, I'd be interested in knowing what the uh, parking arrangements, once people get to the dockage, and then secondarily, at the landing points, where are they going to go and how are they going to get out of there? You know, I'd like to right. see that developed a little bit uh, and understand. Yeah. I, I think that's absolutely great, important. Great, great I mean, comments. Shoreside infrastructure and transportation systems from shoreside to where destination. The picture is well thought out. All right, is there a motion for the endorsement of this concept? I believe you were okay with that, Joe. Yes, sir. I so moved. I got a motion to have a second. Yes. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? We'll go to item number seven. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, item number seven, there are actually two items here. Uh, let me cover the, uh, the the large one, but I think the, the easiest one to deal with. And there's a there's a there's roughly a 20-page uh, 
technical document or technical comments that the uh, TPO staff have put together. They have shared them with your technical advisory committee. Uh, so we're in good coordination there. Uh, we're asking for approval to submit those uh, 20 pages worth of technical comments. Uh, and also I'm asking for approval or endorsement of the statement that I have drafted also in here that I would deliver. I believe I'm going to be able to deliver it at uh, Richmond and I'm thinking I will deliver it at both the uh, uh, Peninsula and the uh, South Side public meetings. It can, it can certainly be modified or and I, and I think we've already, I think it's appropriate, Mr. Chairman, to let, it, let the entire board know that uh, last week DRPT, a VDRPT, has agreed to arrange to have the uh, host mayor, that would be uh, Mayor Paul Frame and Joe Frank, at the respective meetings, uh, open up uh, those meetings and, and they can have remarks at that point. And then the, the chair, you and the vice chair, uh, Mayor Ward, uh, can follow those folks if it fits your schedule. And I know that the Mayor Sessoms is able to do that. Uh, Mayor Ward's still working on that. And they will be there to make remarks also in addition to this statement. So right now, that's all I know that we have on the table for submittal uh, to, the, to the public record. Do you have a motion for support of both? So Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? We'll move on to item number eight. Uh, Mr. Chairman, item number eight has been evolving daily. So what I'd like to do is, is give you a summary of some of the significant updates. First and very important, I have uh, uh, communicated to Dr. Metcalf with TIMS that our FY10 TPO budget cannot support the $320,000 price tag that is in here without going to uh, uh, a surcharge to the localities. Uh, Thames has also been notified that it must create a modified FY10 uh, scope of work to reflect what I have termed a critically needed uh, uh, scopes of work and tasks so that we don't miss any critically needed uh, 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 decision points. Third, Thames has been notified to get the price down substantially. They are currently down to almost 50% of the 320,000. I'm actually in the neighborhood right now with a scope that I've, that I've just seen in the last few days and over the weekend at about $180,000. I believe, uh, and again, we've got to have some more discussion here this morning. I believe that if we stay at that price range or lower for FY10, I would not have to come back to the board for any surcharge request. It would consume my entire contingency, which is only about $167,000, I believe. So, uh, again, with that price level, I, I just want to put some people at ease. I don't have to come back and ask for uh, more money. We're still developing FY11 budgets. I've been talking with uh, senior staff and Nancy Collins, our CFO. What we plan to do is wait until somewhere as late as May or June to see how your budget process goes and then to see what you can do for us and then we'll solidify our FY11 budget and I'll know better what we can sustain on projects like this starting July 1. But I'm confident if our budgets stay close to where they are now, even with the cuts from the feds and the state, I can continue to sustain this. Now, with all that said, late yesterday, I had a call from Kevin Page uh, with Amy's office at DRPT and I had a discussion with Amy this morning. And let me get something clear about a statement in here about the steering committee's vote uh, to recommend to you folks that uh, we unanimous that they unanimously agree to uh, recommend Tim's. DRPT had been requested to participate. I believe they will fully participate. We're unable to make that meeting. So uh, the unanimous vote at the steering committee was without.